Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm discussing a topic that sparks a lot of debate among churches. Should church musicians be paid for their services? For some, playing music in church is an offering to God and a form of worship, and they argue that it should be voluntary based. Others feel that musicians deserve compensation given the time, dedication, and skill required to lead worship effectively. Let's dive into both perspective and see what the Bible has to say. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're not subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when we post new content, which is daily. All right, we're discussing today whether or not church musicians should be paid and see if there's any, what the Bible has to say about this perspective. First, let's explore the perspective that musicians in church should be seen as an offering to God and to the church. This view argues that a service in any form, whether it's playing for, uh, an instrument or helping to set up for events, should be done out of the love and commitment rather than for financial gain. There are passages in the Bible, like 1 Peter 4, 10, that emphasizes serving uh, with our gifts is an act of stewardship. It says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards to God's grace in its various forms. For some, this verse underscores the idea of freely giving our talent back to God. Another concern is that if churches start paying musicians, it might lead to an expectation that everyone offering service should now be paid from ushers to choir members to song, uh, Sunday school teachers, etc., etc. This could create financial strain on the church, especially small congregations that may already have limited resources. Yeah. Now let's look at the other side of the argument. Many believe that musicians should be compensated for their work, given the time, financial investment, and extensive training required to serve as a profession at this professional level. Music isn't just a hobby for everyone, right? It's a career and a calling for a lot of us as well. Preparing and leading worship services demands significant practice, skill, and often a deep understanding of music and theology. Personally, over my lifetime, I've spent thousands of hours honing my craft. I've spent nine years in university acquiring two degrees in music. I've invested thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And even right now, uh, I play in church every week. And I think it's safe to say I average anywhere from three to six hours of preparation time just so I can be ready for service. And I'm a pro musician. I learn pretty fast. And it still takes me about three to six hours to learn all the songs and get everything ready and rehearsals and all of that stuff. So it's a huge commitment. Do you struggle with these three crucial questions? What to practice, how to practice effectively, and when to move on to the next level? Without clear answers, progress is slow and frustrating. This is why I created PianoLessonWithWarren.com, a structured program tailored for gospel pianists, guiding you from beginner to advance seamlessly. At every step, you'll know exactly what to practice, how to practice it, and when to advance. Join thousands of successful students worldwide who have achieved their musical goals with my proven method. Visit PianoListenWithWarren.com and start your seven-day free trial today. Let's consider a supporting verse for this, right? 1 Timothy 5, 18, which states, the worker deserves his wages. Although this verse primarily refers to uh, those in formal ministry, it speaks to the principle that work, even in church setting, has value and can be compensated. For many musicians, music ministry is a full-time job. It involves expenses like instrument, sound equipment, and continuous training and preparation. Financial compensation can help musicians sustain their craft and bring excellence to the music ministry. Some churches aim for a middle ground, right? By offering modest stipends 
or love offering to musicians, especially for special services or events. This way, musicians feel appreciated without placing too much financial burden on the church. This approach can balance the desire to honor musicians' time, skill, and the church's financial reality. The Bible often mentions supporting those who serve in ministry. For instance, in 1 Corinthians 9, 13 to 14, Paul speaks of how those who preach the gospel should receive their um, living from the gospel. While this mainly refers to pastors and preachers, the principle could be also extended to musicians who are also leading the congregation in worship. So with all that in mind, where does this leave us? Whether you believe musicians should be paid or not, it's crucial to recognize the value that we bring to the worship. Playing music for a congregation isn't just a performance, it's a ministry in itself. As a community, churches should discuss this issue with mutual respect and a willingness to find solutions that honor both the dedication of musicians and the mission of the church. Ultimately, each church has to prayerfully consider how to handle this topic. The dedication should be based on the unique needs and resources of the congregation, along with commitment to support each other in ministry. My personal view on this is that yes, musicians should be paid. And this is going to vary from each church, right? Every church is different in terms of its resource. And that's something that has to be looked at. But the expectation that musicians should just give of their gift freely because it was freely given to them by God is, is unreasonable. As someone who does music full time and has been doing so for the last 20 years, I can tell you the gift of music was given by God, but we had to put in thousands of hours to hone this, this gift. And, and, and sharpen this skill to get to the point where we can function as pro gospel musicians. Not to mention, the world is always beckoning. The world is always calling for musicians to go play secular music. I'm not gonna lie, when I just got out of college, a lot of my uh, income was from playing secular music. The Lord has blessed me to now where I only, and I wanna say within the last decade, I've dedicated my talents only towards gospel music. Unless someone hire me to play like their wedding, friend or family, gospel music is what I do. I was blessed to do that, but many other musicians aren't that fortunate as yet. And so the least I believe churches can do is compensate them in some way or another. And this needs to be a discussion between the musicians, right? The church that I currently play for, before I started playing for them, we had a round table discussions about the vision of the church, what would be expected of us and compensation and all of that. So we're all in agreement, we're all on the same page and there's no resentment. And I just think every church needs to sort of have a sit down with their musician, be real. Can the church financially offer some form of compensation? I'm not saying churches need to provide your entire financial obligation right your entire income needs to come from the church most churches aren't in a position to grant that there are some mega churches that have full-time musicians and staff because they have like six thousand members or something like that but the reality is most churches can't do that but there has to be some form of compensation in my opinion so let me know what you think in the comments. Should church musicians be paid or should it be considered an offering? I'd love to hear your thoughts and experience. The lack of payment or the lack of compensation rather to church musicians is a huge reason why a lot of church musicians no longer play for church. Now, there are other reasons why the church lose musicians. And I did a video on that last week. You can check that video out right here. Five reasons why churches are losing pianists and just musicians in general. All right. Thanks for watching. And I look forward to chatting with you in the comments.